What is up, my fellow Net Dwellers? Couch Command here, and today we're doing another five amazing mods. And by today, I mean the first time in like three months. I know it's been a bit, but let's go ahead and just jump right into it. All right, for this video, we're going to start out from cheesiest and go to culture. And as far as cheesiest go, you can't get much cheesier than Cheat Engine. I'm just going to show you a basic option side of it. Uh, this is Cheat Engine combined with a uh, cheat table created by Marcus101RR. This just gives us some functionality to mod our base character. For instance, let's go ahead and take a look at our stats here, right? Brand new character, level 7, monk, whatever. Nothing special to them. Let's go ahead and go to our Cheat Engine. Now, I've already attached my process and my code cheat table here. So what you're going to do whenever you have cheat open engine open is go to your process you're gonna find your Elden Ring and you're gonna open that just click open once you've added your cheat table it should just pop off to the side there like uh, like this and whenever you're down here you can just click pointers we got our player playtime last save capacity we've got our stats here we've got vigor and we have memory references, but we need to actually modify these and it's not able to actually find them. Like the address, question mark, question mark, strength, description. Anyway, so my current version is no longer correctly updated as far as this goes. So we're going to actually have to alter my pointer. So if you go into debug, Marcus included the fetch base address, so we just tap that and it'll actually get these values for us. Now we're gonna go ahead and exit the debug and go into our pointer script here. We need to actually modify the script and you'll notice we have define player pointer Elden Ring and it's set to the 3C, 53C8. We actually need to change it to this. So for the player pointer, we're going to change to this. Come on, control B. Ah. C, control V. Base stats, we're gonna change to this. Profile pointer, thank goodness he did this in order because that would be pain. Map pointer. And lastly, playtime pointer. And let's go ahead and click OK. Make sure that I actually saved. Yep. OK. And let's close out of this one. Let's go ahead and go pointers. And then let's go ahead and go down to our stats. And now we have our values here. Notice bigger 10, mine 14, endurance 8 come back to our game vigor 10 mine 14 endurance 8 so now if we go back into the cheat engine we can go ahead and just say let's go ahead and set our bigger value to let's go with 100 i feel like we should be 100 for mind as well for endurance strength also sure 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 and sure resistance uh, we can tweak this if we want to I'm not gonna bother with that for now armor we currently don't have any armor anyways so that's the stats, but we can actually change our health at some point as well, I believe. Yep, health. Let's go ahead and just alter our max health. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a max health of, I don't know, what's, how about 5,000? We'll just double ours. Oh, apparently it resets because health is based off of bigger. So let's go back into Elden Ring now. And apparently max level is actually 99999, not 1000. So we are max level for all of our abilities. And our health is way, way, way above where it can be. So let's go ahead and go try to play with this and see what happens.
So that was Cheat Engine by Marcus. Well, that was Cheat Engine coupled with the Cheat Table by Marcus 101RR. His cheat setup basically gives you an easy way to find the memory references, to alter your stats, give yourself god mode, do whatever you want as far as the game goes. You can give yourself items. It is the cheesiest of the cheese and the most breaking thing you can possibly do to Dark Souls. Except for potentially Grant God Mode, which there may be a mod out there that does that, but I haven't discovered it yet. Going along with the cheesy thing, we have the Grand Merchant by Wasser. Wasser? D-A-W-S-E-R. Not quite sure how to pronounce it. Uploaded by Zixolis. Basically, the Grand Merchant is similar to uh, the Merchant off of Dark Souls 3, where you now have access to all of the game's items for free. However, unlike Dark Souls 3, where you had to go make a specific gesture to a random skeleton out in the middle of nowhere, you can now actually just access all these great things via your crafting menu. So if we come in here and we go ahead and hit start, go into item crafting, if you look here, we have pretty much every item in the game available to craft now. From pair items to pots to remembrances to weapons you name it you can craft it in here and if you're looking over on the right right about now you'll see over there that basically none of this functionality is in the normal compared to this like you have so many more items available you can literally craft anything and notice over here as far as this top arrow where it says requirements no requirements, you just go ahead and craft them. Now I have 25 of those arrows. Let's say I want a weapon of some kind. I probably should have gone from the top down, but whatever. Maps, bubbles, forms, weapons. Let's say I want, oh uh, yeah, sure, let's go with this prayer book. I come into equipment, I click here, and there is the Sendaki prayer book, which is apparently a sword of some kind, which I cannot use at all. So yeah, that is the Grand Merchant, and if you want in a quick, easy way to give yourself any item in the game, that's the mod for you. It doesn't have quite the same breaking effect that Cheat Engine does, where you can max all your stats and do a bunch of other stuff, but if you're just wanting access to items, and specifically all items, all remembrances, everything. Grand Merchant by Vossier is the way to go. Up next is just a mod that's not cheesy at all. Instead, this is just a mod to add some variety to your gameplay. This is just a basic item and parameter randomization. It was created by Luke Yui, and I swear I've said his name before because I know he's probably done some mods for something in the past. But essentially what this mod does is any of the random drops you have, for instance, this guy right up ahead of me, normally he gives you two fingers. The finger for summoning friends, finger for summoning enemies, kind of useless whenever you're having to play offline due to modding. But now with this, we've got a smithing stone and rockeries for some reason. I mean, I'm fine with that, but whatever. You just have a random draw now on any of the items throughout the world. That's all the item randomizer does. Uh, you have functionality inside of it to keep the key items the same. That way you don't get uh, locked as far as progression goes. I advise you go that route. But as far as all of your random other drops, why not? Go ahead and switch it up. If you beat the game, go ahead and have some fun and play it again with a little bit of chaos in the mix. Now, as far as this mod goes, I don't like the way it runs by default. What I mean is, if I go into... If I go into the actual folder here for the contents, it says just unzip this into the thing. This launcher does not actually prevent the normal op online startup, so it'll try to log you in if you use it. Which sucks. Instead, what I did is I actually used the Elden Mod Loader, which loads VLLs inside of a mods folder, which I had to use for another mod that we're going to talk about later. 
But I use that and I put the Elden Ring Atom Randomizer DLL in here. And then I included the I and I in here as well as on game. I'm not sure which one you need. I believe it's the game one though. You'll notice this one actually has got a seed text associated. So I'm going to bet almost 100% that you're going to need this one versus I bet the one in mods folder doesn't have yet. So this one in mods folder you don't need. You can delete this without any issue. You just need the item randomizer in this one and you need to have the actual I and I in this folder. So if you go ahead and put the DLL in here and the item randomizer folder inside of your base folder, it'll be able to launch using the mod loader and you'll be able to play using all the mods you want, well, all the DLL mods you want. And you'll be able to use the offline ring launcher, which is what I've been using until now, which will prevent EAC and online mode functionality from running. It also changes your save location, so, hey, you don't have your modded saves propagating across to whenever you're trying to play online on normal and potentially causing you to get banned. So, anyways, that's the item randomized mod. I highly, highly advise you pay attention to that last bit, even if you're not the biggest fan of the mod, because trying to load the DLLs whenever the actual launcher isn't doing what you need is not a bad method. Our next mod up is purely an ease of life mod. Say you're about ready to fight the horseman down here, and you hear your dog rummaging around, around upstairs, they took off with a quilt, or maybe you decide to make the mistake of getting Taco Bell to lunch, and you have about five seconds to make it to the bathroom before you're going to need a mop. Either which way, you need to pause this game, and you can't. Notice, hit start, and I'm still getting my butt kicked. Not very quickly due to the fact I did Feed Engine earlier and I'm playing on that character without even realizing it, but nevertheless, I am still getting wrecked by this guy. Because starting, it doesn't interrupt your control input, it doesn't stop the game, it doesn't do anything. It is purely just letting you interact with your equipment and inventory, but in real time while everything is still trying to kill you. Now let's go ahead and try this again Except for we're going to be using a mod. So the mod is known as Pause of the Game, created by TechieW and IRTreus. And yeah, that's kind of what it lets you do. It lets you pause the game. Let's go ahead and demo it real quick. We're going to charge the horse guy again, just like before. This time when our stomach starts gurgling... Hey, first story. Pay attention. My stomach's starting to gurgle now have paused the game. We are dead state. Nothing's happening. We're good to go run and be back. This guy currently cannot hit me. I currently can't do anything. Uh, there are some little hiccups where you can potentially cause the game not to unpause when you hit start, in which case you just got to pause again and kind of mess with it. But it will stop the game the majority of the time and you just hit start again to start playing whenever you're back. And pause again to stop it. Nose here, glitched it. I can't move, he's still stuck. But you can just do that stuff there to be able to get it. You just play with the start menu a little bit. But just like that, you're able to pause the game. You can take breaks as needed. And since you can't play online with these mods, or you should play online with these mods anyways, it's not a big deal if you pause the game. It's not like you're gonna have people joining your game or have friends stuck there waiting on you. Instead, it's just something to make your life a little easier when you're doing your fights solo, which is how you should play modded Elden Ring, modded Dark Souls, whatever. Don't cheat and ruin other people's experience. If you're gonna cheat, if you're gonna mod, keep it offline, do it responsibly. Anyways, that was the pause game mod by Techie and Atreus. Up last, for those who've watched all the way to the end, time for some culture. This here is the Duelist Outfit. Duelist Mask, Duelist uh, Gravekeeper's Cloak, and the Duelist Pants. Fairly basic outfit as far as the game goes. However, there's some variants out there that make it a little more cultured, a little more eye candy type, a little more appealing in general. This is a Loot Duelist set by GX Red. You'll notice it's a 
little more revealing, a little skimpier, and the default versions are a lot more than this. This version is the black undergarments coupled with a cape mod. There are ones that do white, there are ones that do other colors. There's one that has no undergarments at all and you're, and you're just running around with a cape as a streaker. This is the Lude Duo set by GX Red. And it just adds, you know, a nice cultured outfit to the game that you can enjoy a little. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. This was Couch Band. You guys all have a good night, a great tomorrow, and amazing rest of the week. I'll see you next time.